Salutations my Fallout lovers, it is Maddie here today with a Fallout 4 discussion video. Today we are going to be talking more about console mods for Fallout 4 and the 2 gigabyte limit that is currently in place for console mods on the Xbox One. And I wanted to weigh out the pros and cons for this ordeal here and also toss out my opinion. So starting off, I just wanted to go ahead and say that I'm not relatively surprised. And this is coming from someone who grew up with consoles. I love consoles, even though I have a very, very, very good PC, I still preferably game on consoles. It's just kind of how I am. I know it sounds weird, but that's just the type of gamer I am. So do know that this opinion is not coming from some type of PC elitist who looks down his nose at console gamers. I think consoles are awesome. I love them. I don't really have a bias towards any system or anything. I just like the game, man. But I will say this much, I'm not surprised that there's a limit because although no matter what type of gamer you are, you have to admit that to some degree, consoles are underpowered in comparison to PC. The reason I just say this is just because of the fact that with PC users, you have hundreds upon hundreds of mods that can be active at once. I've seen so many crazy load orders for Fallout 4, Skyrim, etc. But for me, I've never been that type of modder. I've always had about like 20, 30 or so, nothing too crazy. And so I think that this two gigabyte limit isn't as bad as it looks. I know a lot of people are still gonna say it's bullshit and cry and I get that that's always going to happen but I just wanted to put things into perspective for you guys and look at some of the top downloaded mods on Nexus that will be coming to Fallout 4 console mods on Bethesda net just to let you guys know the file size for some of these big mods that I think people are just generally overreacting for for example the unofficial Fallout 4 patch a mod that you are definitely going to need it fixes the base game essentially and gets rid of all the glitches and bugs 459 kilobytes true storms one of the most popular Fallout 4 mods that I absolutely adore, 43 megabytes. Homemaker, which adds a thousand, 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 you hear that number, new objects to your settlements, 19 megabytes. Enhanced blood textures, this is the biggest mod of the bunch so far, 139 megabytes. Note how these are four crucial mods that you're likely going to have downloaded and you're not even scratching the surface of your two gigabyte limit. It sucks having a limit and I get it because when we get these bigger mods, such as the Seattle mod that's coming our way in the next few years that's apparently bigger than Far Harbor, that's going to be insane. That's going to be a huge file size. And we don't know if console players are going to get their hands on that. And that's where I understand the frustration because you're not going to be able to access everything. But part of me is a little confused at the surprise behind this because we do know that consoles are limited because they're a one-time purchase so that you can continuously game, pop in the disc. It's simple. And I'm not saying that that's because console gamers are simplistic, but it just keeps you from constantly having to upgrade and invest in money and parts and all this stuff for your PC, which a lot of people just don't have the money for or just choose not not to bother themselves with, which I totally get. So that's why I'm not too surprised that consoles have a bit of a limit because it comes down to hardware, not the type of gamer you are or anything like that. But I'm not surprised, but when you put it into perspective and you hear some of the top mods that you're going to want, that you're going to be able to mess around with that will add to your game, especially with new types of mods that will let you have all these armor slots, these new weapons and stuff. These are kilobytes and tiny megabytes. They are such small mods, it's not even funny. Quest mods also aren't that huge. And for me personally, Sometimes I find myself downloading a mod, playing it through, and then uninstalling it. I usually don't just keep it installed there because once you're kind of done with some of the quest playthrough mods and they don't give you a new weapon or anything, then you're just kind of done with it. And that's all there is to it. And maybe that's different for people, but for me, that's just kind of how I've rolled so I don't have a cluttered load order. It's just kind of something with me. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. But what I'm saying here is that you also have the ability to enable and disable whatever mods you want for Fallout 4 thanks to Bethesda Net, and you can do this with Nexus as well. But what I'm saying is that it's very easy to activate and deactivate certain mods. And most importantly is that I know Bethesda said that they want us to break our games, but I don't think Microsoft or Sony want the users breaking their system. So when you have 40,000 mods installed and your system can't handle it and it can't start up the game or anything, you can't disable these mods to get your game functioning again, I think it kind of makes sense why there is a bit of a limit on there. And mind you that this limit is not permanent. Bethesda has said that they are looking into changing it, increasing it over time. So likely this is a test phase right now. Let's see how two gigabytes works. It should work just fine. And then once people get out there into the wild, we start testing more, they can increase that limit until the system can't handle anymore, which is fantastic. Who knows? Maybe it'll be like 10 gigabytes at one point. That would be awesome. And I could totally see that happening. While we're talking about mods, I wanted to address something. I saw a Reddit post from a mod maker who said that basically what was happening with console 
console mods is that I ended up sucking out the fun of creating mods for these mod makers. And I just wanted to address this because I'm not saying that console players or even PC players are entitled or coming across rude, but some do to these mod makers. And honestly, for this mod maker out here, it's awesome that your work is so well appreciated that people are actually asking you to bring it wherever you possibly can. That's awesome and you should be proud of your work and I insist that you keep on kicking ass and keep on trucking, my friend. But with this said, you guys do have to realize when you are messing around with these new mods that for us PC gamers, we're kind of used to this. We know that these modders don't have to do this. We don't expect it of them. Where some console gamers are kind of going to get used to stepping into this and expecting that these mods are going to be functioning. Sometimes certain things will not work and you're going to have to deal with that until the modder can fix it. But you also have to remember, this is a hobby for most of these people. Yes, they'd love to make mods full time, but they have other things to do. So when a mod doesn't work and it's out there, they don't have to rush to a patch like these developers who are paid to do this. It's their job to get the game functioning. And I'm not saying that that's a free pass for these mod makers, but just be remember to always be kind to them. They're not forced to do this. They're doing this because they love the game. They love making mods. They love making games in general. And that's all it is. They're not making money out of it. If they do make a good mod, obviously there'll be endorsements involved, but still they're not really necessarily paid for this. They don't make it expecting money or expecting fame to kind of grow out of it. They do it because they love it. And I just kind of felt like when I saw this Reddit post, I was really feeling for this guy. I kind of have seen it happen firsthand. And I just wanted to give everyone a heads up on exactly what they're dealing with because we should treat all game developers with respect but modders in general as well I think deserve an extra special type of respect not more or less but just a special type of respect because they do this out of their free time and love for mods not because they have to so I just wanted to put that out there give my two cents on it I'm not one to reprimand the fallout community I'm not in that type of position even though I'm one of the bigger Bethesda channels I still don't think it's my position to tell you guys how to act and behave because that's just kind of like censorship in a weird way but I will give my two cents and advice on that and think that hopefully you guys can be respectful of these awesome mod makers because they just they make Bethesda games even more better they're the reason that Bethesda games have life longer than just the initial launch period and DLC it's because of mod makers that were able to make fallout content for years on end until the next Bethesda game comes out so be sure to constantly thank these mod makers for their awesome work because they are amazing people they're always looking to include members of the community for voice acting and stuff so you guys can definitely get involved in these mods and it's just an awesome team project and I just wanted to thank the mod makers and hope that you guys can do the same so other than that i hope you guys enjoyed this quick little discussion video on fallout 4 console mods in general and just give my thoughts on the whole thing as always be sure to follow me on twitter like me on facebook the links are in the description check out sugarbomb.com the place by bethesda fans for bethesda fans other than that stay sexy stay active i love you all peace